Hello and thank you for buying Henson's Flying Machines Hawk Hurricane. This laser cut sheet comes on five individually cut sheets of balsa wood. It contains your rubber power kit with propeller, tissue for covering in two different colours and RAF transfers. To assemble this kit you will need a sharp set of Stanley knives or scalpels, super glue or balsa cement and the instructions included in the box. To begin assembling the kit, first start by marking out all of the different parts on each sheet according to the parts list included in the sheet. You can then carefully remove them from each sheet using a scalpel or sharp blade to ease away the edges. Be careful on pushing the pieces out as they are held in by small taps. To begin assembling the kits you will need part 1A, one bead of fuselage large sides, part 2A, the main cross section above the wings, and part 3A, which sits forward of that, supporting the wing section. Now you're going to want to assemble these using a 90 degree angle, so just cut out of the side edge of the balsa there, and a 90 degree guide for yourself. Now we begin with putting part 3A into the fuselage section 1A, dropping it into that tab slot there. As you can see, that tab slot is just forward of the angled slot which forms the beginning of the cockpit section. Now, before I glue this in place, <coughs> I'm going to use my 90 degree measure, just like so, just to make sure that it's sat where I want it, and then it's going to give me a square fuselage and butt it up against there and just drop a little bit of glue into that corner hold it all together. I can reinforce this a little bit later when it's dry put some glue on the other side like so and once I'm happy with that get part 3A which sits slightly forward of there try fit that just into there and again using that 90 degree edge I'm going to Lay it forward like so, make sure it's sitting in flush, and then glue just here. Hold it in place in vertical. With 2A and 3A in place, you can start fitting part. 1B, the opposite side of the fuselage. Make sure that you're going into the same slots on the opposite side. Just lay that in there and make sure the tab in the top is flush. If for any reason you need to sand away the tabs just to get them to sit right, just make sure that you do. And then glue everything in once you're happy with how it's sitting, that it's flush and at 90 degrees. Right, now let that little section dry before moving on. With the two cross sections in, the next piece of fit is part 4A, which fits in just the beginning of the tail here, into those two tabs. Make sure it's pressed all the way down, and as you'll see, it will protrude slightly below the bottom of the fuselage. That's going to give the hurricane some of its shape. Make sure that it's vertical, and then glue on the inside. While you're doing this, just make sure that the whole airframe is straight and as you want it the tail is going to first begin its taper here. Glue it in place, tighten up and then move on to 5A which is the front of the aircraft, the base of the nose, which slots over these two tabs like so here. Then hold it in place very gently and glue it on the inside. Just hold that until dry. The next part to fit in is part 6A, which is the rear former of the fuselage. This slots into the rear two tabs here. Just gently slot the tabs down into there. Make sure that the two tail sections of the fuselage are perpendicular to each other and that the bends mirror each other. 
and glue just along the inside till it's held. Again, keep eyeballing it to make sure that you've got the fuselage straight. You can of course measure this. I'm just going to hold it in place. Make sure that you have nice glue coverage there. Give it a lot of strength in the tail section. Again, hold until happy. The next part to go in is 7A, which is the rear of the cockpit form, which goes into the slot here just forward. It has two tabs which slide down into the two slots on each side. You may need to slightly pull the fuselage apart and then just drop them in. Make sure that the top of the tabs is parallel with the size of the fuselage and just gently pinching it together, glue each side like so. Then the next part of the fuselage is the instrument panel itself or instrument cluster which is 8A which fits quite easily into the slatted slots just there forward. Now hold it from each side and then just with a little touch of glue into each side you'll see how it lays there creating your instrument panel like so. Before moving on from the fuselage, we're going to need to fit part 9A, which is the cockpit floor. This goes in from the bottom of the aircraft, and then just push it backwards until it fits square up against the beginning of the fuselage form is here. And then if you level it up to the bottom here, you'll get a nice tight fit all the way around. Slightly pinch the fuselage together, glue it to this cross section here, and then to all the areas where it touches the fuselage. Try and keep it nice and flat all the way through. Add a little bit of glue where needed. And then hold until dry. With that section in place, we can lay the fuselage aside for a moment and start building the tail section. The tail section consists of part 11A, 13A and the triangle former here, 12A. Now these slot together like so. Part 12A slots into the lower slot of 11A. Just like so. Push it all the way along and up flush. A little bit of glue to hold it in place. It's nice as well at this point just to check that it's at 90 degrees. Hold it to dry at 90. And then move on with part 13A, the front of the tailplane. Now, always dry fit them first, just to make sure they're in place. And if there's any sand they've needed to the slot, do that ahead of time. And then just push it up as far as the slot will allow you. Use the 90 degree angle to confirm it's seated right. And then glue 11A to 13A all the way along the wing section here. Now the slot should guide it into place and make sure that it's seated correctly, but just eyeball it and make sure it is as you would like it. Now with that dry, we can fit it into the bottom of the fuselage. Now to fit that into the tail section here, slightly prise apart the tail, slot in the assembled tail section into the two arms like that, and then just flatten it together, squeeze the entire assembly up like so, make sure that it is fitting straight and square. You want to do that by eyeball and then just glue all the little bits together so everything holds itself in place nice and flush and flat so that your tailplane is on straight and then along there like so. Wait for that to dry properly before moving on with the build. With the fuselage coming together now it's time to fit the top formers of the nose which is 14 A and B these here. Slide them into the slots making sure that they push down fully the whole way. If there is any trimming needed just give it a little bit of sand on each side. 
dry fit both of them first just to make sure they're the same on each side. Uh, nice and tight down in there. Then just apply a little bit of pressure on both sides, glue them on the inside edge there. Just like so. Now let that little bit dry and then we'll move on to parts 15 A and B which are the lower formers of the fuselage and they Parts 15A and B are fitted in exactly the same manner. Just slot them into the bottom there. Press it together very slightly. Just hold it in place. Drop of glue on the inside. Same with 15B. Now if there is any excess wood protruding out of the sides, just sand this flat or trim it flat before finally covering the model or displaying it. There you are, that is the fuselage coming together. Now we're ready for the stringers, which we will fit later on after fitting the wings. The fuselage is almost complete. It is still remaining to fit part 10A, which is the center section of the wings or the base of the fuselage, also listed as the fuselage floor. Now you'll see here that there is a long tab running along the bottom. That fits on the there covers both sides like so and then pushes up flat. You'll see that everything should line up just like so and then we can glue into the tab pushing it down in place. All the way along and you've got a nice strong solid bond. As the wing sections are going to bond to this and it needs to be very straight against the fuselage. Like so, make sure it's down flush, and then you can also glue on the inside just to give it a little bit added strength because this section will take up a few impacts when you have any wing heavy landings. There you are, and letting that dry, we'll start building the nose section up. To begin building up the nose, this comes in several sections which slot or glue together, starting from part 17a and b. 18A and B all the way through to part 22A which is the end of the aircraft nose. Now to build these simply butt them up together like so, make sure that they're flush and then glue along the line where they meet. The purpose of these sections is when they're all glued together they will form a two-dimensional lattice nose which can then be sanded three-dimensional and smoothed with all of the edges to look like the proper nose of a hurricane fighter. There we go. Now begin by taking the biggest as a base and then layering on top of that making sure that you have an equal distance the whole way around. Like so use the central rectangle as a guide. Drop that on. It makes sense to spend a bit of time doing this, making sure that everything's aligned correctly as you want it. And then you can sand away anything you don't want.
the end goal of this will be to use a, the, a nail file, sanding block or some sandpaper to basically shave down the nose to a smooth flush curvature and then you can fit the propeller unit directly into it and the curved 3D printed boss over the top. Right, so now I would recommend sanding all of this in advance of gluing it to the fuselage. Um, in this case, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to glue it directly to the front of the fuselage. Like so, I'm going to align it just right. Get it in place, and then glue it on straight and upright. Like so, I can also put a bit of glue on the inside here just to kind of reinforce it. Like so. To build up the fuselage sides we need parts 24A and B which are the longer side curves. These fit into the little cutouts on the side and run horizontally along the length all the way to the nose section. Just keep them horizontal, aligned with the cutouts in the side of the fuselage. And then skid them in place with a touch of glue just underneath, all the way along. And also to the... Just put a little bit of pressure further back here to help bend the former down in line with the side of the fuselage. The next part for the same size is 25A. Continue the addition of the curving formers on the opposite side of the fuselage with parts 24B and 25B in exactly the same manner. If you are putting any strain and pushing in, just support from the inside. And hold and glue. Like so. With the fuselage coming together, it's time to start building up the wing sections. Uh, we're going to start with parts 26A and 27A, which are the leading edge of the wing and the trailing edge of the wing. Now these jigsaw together very easily using these little tapered slots here that make sure that they fit perfectly together. The aileron of the aircraft is removable, it's just held in by tabs. If you want that to be used, then now is the time to take it out. There are three types of uh, wing ribs included. As you'll see they come in three lengths. The wing ribs with two holes in are for the outside of the wing. These slot straight into these holes here like so and will form the end of the wing tip. The first step is to glue leading edge and trailing edge together. Align these two jigsaw cutouts as well as possible and then just run a little bit of glue Cross and holding them in place. And the same with the inside. This needs to be done on a totally flat surface so that the wing will be flat. With those in place you can start with the outer wing rib and then just glue that into these very easy guiding slots on the end of the wing tip. Like so. Once in place, run a little glue along it, touching it to the wingtip just to give it that more strength. Wingtips always are a bit fragile during landings. Now the next wingtip type has two oval shaped holes in it. You can see the difference between the larger ones which have two oval shaped holes and one perfectly round hole. I'm going to put one of these in the center here in the first of the smaller two slots. I'm just going to rest that into place there. That's going to give me an idea of the wing depth. And I'm going to put one of the longer type A wing profiles on the inside of the wing. Like so. Now I'm going to align them all as far forward as they will slide in that slot. There's not a lot of movement but if there is always align towards the front and then glue front and back and wherever you come into contact with the inside of the wing. 
and glue in that tight B rib. And I'm going to glue it to the aileron as well as I'm not going to make the ailerons removable in this kit. I'm going to glue the ailerons into place. If you are doing full control surfaces, now would be a time to trim down the wing ribs so that you have that movement. Now, I'm going to use two more of the Type B medium length strings, uh, sorry, ribs, and place them in the two holes, like so. Align forward, and then glue it. Front and back. And then we complete the wing with the three of the larger ribs going in a line forward from the inside. Of the wing, like so. And then with them all seated the way I want them, glue them into place, front and rear. Put plenty of glue on there just to give them the strength that's needed. And then that is wing mostly complete apart from the main spar. Um, the next parts that you're going to want to put in, you can put in now or later, which are parts 31, A, B, C and D, which are these wing tip shapes. I'll put them in right now, save us for getting them later. And these sit just like so to make up the little chamfered edges of the wings. Now, align these wherever you're comfortable as these are going to shape the tissue as it fits on. The only thing I would say is make sure that the starboard wing and port wing are arranged in the same way or it'll look fairly silly. There we go, and that also adds a bit of wing strip ten, wing tip strength and shape. Now one very important thing when putting the wing together is to make sure that you have a starboard wing and a port wing rather than trying to build two of the same size wings. So once you've completed one wing, lay it out like so and then lay the second wing out as a mirror copy of this next to it. As you can see here, I've laid out both the port wing and the starboard wing so that I can be absolutely sure that I'm building opposite wings. If not, you're going to end up with an aircraft with got two left wings and it's going to be very very difficult to rectify and take that apart and rebuild. There we go. With the two opposite wing sections complete, it's time to attach them to the fuselage itself. This is done on the bottom here. You'll be able to see the small guides on each side. They will clip just in there like so. And the wing will be guided upwards by these here, allowing it to sit at the correct angle. With that, just glue it all along that inside edge, glue it to the vertical supports, make sure that the wing is sitting flush against it. It's usually best to hold it upside down if the aircraft has a dihedral. In this case, the Hawker Hurricane does not have a big dihedral to it, but still hold it in place um, just until it's really set properly there. And then repeat the process on the opposite side again, slotting the tiny little peg point in, holding everything in position, turning it upside down and then gluing it all along the inside and wherever the wing meets the fuselage. Like so, try and make it as flush as possible across the bottom here. It's in place, it's time to fit the main spire of the wing, which should slot into the top of all of the wing ribs and push up flush with the fuselage, like so. And just tuck that down to sit flush with the top of each wing rib, so that when you cover it, you get a nice smooth effect. And then 
begin gluing it at the inside where it meets the fuselage and the support and then just with a little drop of glue the whole way along the wing just wherever it passes through the wing ribs and then repeat on the other side Go. and that is our hurricane coming together. We'll put some more of the fuselage formers on now and some of the control surfaces. To carry on with the fuselage we're going to use some of the stringers included in the kit. Now break these apart very gently, make sure not to damage them. Now these are going to build up the actual curvature and shapes of the fuselage. I'm going to start from the nose here. And in no particular order I'm going to use the stringers and just Test lay them in the fuselage, like so, and then using a sharp blade, trim them to the length that you want. There you are. Now, just fit them in to the slots on the top of all of the fuselage formers until they sit down flush. And Glue them into place, like so. The Hurricane is unique in our kits in that it has longer stringers that run down the side of the fuselage across the cockpit area. Now, start these in on the front, uncut, and then just glue into the nose section. It will help you bend it across the top of the fuselage, across the cockpit instrument panel, down the side of the rear of the cockpit former, and then down towards the tail section. Just hold that in place until it is dried satisfactory. And then you're going to want to repeat the process on the opposite side of the fuselage, starting again from the nose and then bending it backwards and long. You'll notice that the tail end will just trail away into nothing, which is fine. That'll sit inside of the fuselage out of the way and help to give shape without too much support. And that gives you the distinctive curved top of the Hurricane. Moving on with the rest of the fuselage, we're going to start building up the top section here. We'll start from one side, building in with formers, like so. I'm going to layer it up from the front, back towards the tail. I'm going to glue it in just onto this top section here. and along into the slots. And down to where it meets the tail of the aircraft. And be very careful with these strings, they are very delicate. Moving on and up the aircraft. Keeping everything in place and aligned. And start from tail on this one and just glue on the first section of the tail fuselage then forward to the next position and finally on to the rear of the cockpit. Now you want to continue that across the airframe
Now, with all of those fuselage folder police pieces in place, you're going to want to trim them at the rear of the fuselage, just like so, sliding across the wood grain, supporting the wood, and then trimming it away, trying not to put any excessive pressure. Like so, you can always use a file as well to help just trim away these little bits when you are covering it and before you put the um, interior decals on. Uh, there you can see the shape of the hurricane has taken a lot more stronger, bolder shape to it. Turning the aircraft over, there are some slots on the bottom that need to be done. The first one runs forward from the tail like so. This slots in da -da -da, and then into this little tab slot on the back of the wing center section which you can cut and then push into and glue like so and just glue into all of the cross member formers along the way. Now for the front of the aircraft repeat the same process as on top of the aircraft running the formers this time from the nose gluing them in place then bending them backwards over to the top and then if you see this central slot here, if you trim this little strip so that it fits into that slot, push it down and then glue that in place. I'm going to repeat the process on each side. Gluing it first at the front. Next, into all of the formers. And then with it glued, just align it with this outer slot here. Trim stringer, just very gently. And then push it down into the outer slot, like so and glue it in space. That's going to give you the shape of the bottom of the fuselage and the power bulge underneath. Now you're going to want to do that with the other side and then we can move on to fitting the scoop. With the last of the undercarriage formers in place, the only part to fit on the underside of the aircraft now is the scoop, part 23C, along with A, B and C, which slot very simply to the underside of part 10A and then with part C fitting like so. Now hold the entire part together, run a little bit of glue along the edges. Now you're going to want to sand a lot of this away, so it's always a good idea to glue in areas where you're not going to sand. That will give you a nice rounded effect when you have sanded it back. Of course, the glue making a harder section making it more difficult to get a nice even sand through it. There you go, and that is the underneath of the aircraft complete with the scoop in place, which we're going to sand down later. Turning the aircraft over, all that remains is the control surfaces, which are the tail upright, part 28A. Now, from 28A, it's a very delicate part, so what you're going to do is run a little glue along it. Whatever you're doing with it, before you cover it, just run a little glue 
against the grain into all of the places that will create a bit more strength. Now, as this is going to be a hand model, I'm just going to glue it directly to the back of 11A, which is going to complete that tail section. Put it in place. I'll run a little bit of more glue around the edges. And done. Uh, I'm going to follow the same process exactly with 29A and B, which are the uh, horizontal control surfaces. I'm going to glue them directly to it. You can, of course, make paper hinges and attach them to it like that, or thread hinges if you wanted to. It's your model. Do with it as you will. For starboard side. And exactly the same process for the port side. And there you have it, the completed hurricane. The landing gear is in four parts, which I'm not going to attach to this particular kit, so I'm going to use it for free flight. They are parts 30A and B, and the inner parts of those being 31A and B, which Quite simply, push out that centerpiece, drop into there, like so, glue along the meeting edge, then once it's dry, those are going to fit into the triangular cutouts and the bottom of the wing on each side and you just slot those into place like so and that is your completed hurricane thank you very much for buying Henson's Fly Machines Hawker Hurricanes happy flying